idea much later that John Milton develops in, in Paradise Lost, which is an amazing poem. And it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a profound enough poem so that it's almost been incorporated into the biblical structure, I would say. So the corpus of Christianity post-Milton was saturated by the Miltonic stories of Satan's rebellion. None of that's in the, in the, in the biblical texts. Or it's only hinted at in, in very brief passages. And Milton wrote his poem to justify the, wor- the ways of God to man, which is quite an ambition, really. It's an amazing, profound ambition to tr- try to produce something, to produce a literary work that justifies being to human beings, because that's what Milton was trying to do. So one of my readers here sent me a link the other day, or, or viewers, to a work of philosophy by an Australian philosopher whose name I don't remember, who basically wrote a book saying that being as such, human experience, is so corrupt and so permeated by suffering that it would be better if it had never existed at all. It's sort of the ultimate expression of nihilism. And Goethe in in Faust, his Mephistopheles, who's a satanic character, obviously, has that as a credo. That, that's, that's Satan's fundamental motivation, is his objection to creation itself, is that creation is so flawed and so rife with suffering that it would be better if it had never existed at all. And so that's his motivation for attempting to continue to destroy it. But in Milton's Paradise Lost, Satan is an intellectual figure. And you see that motif emerge very frequently, by the way, in popular culture. So, for example, in The Lion King, the figure of Scar, who's a satanic figure, is also hyper-intellectual. And that's very common. That, you know, it's the evil scientist motif, or the, or the evil advisor to the king, the same motif. It, it encapsulates something about rationality, and it, what it seems to encapsulate is the idea that rationality, like Satan, is, is the highest angel in God's heavenly kingdom. It's a psychological idea, you know, that the most powerful sub-element of the human psyche is the intellect. And, and, and it's the thing that shines out above all within the domain of humanity and maybe across the, the, the domain of life itself. The human intellect, there's something absolutely remarkable about it. But it has a flaw, and the flaw is that it tends to fall in love with its own productions and to assume that they're total. Solzhenitsyn, when he was writing the Gulag Archipelago, had a warning about that with regards to totalitarian ideology. And he said that the price of selling your God-given soul to the entrapments of, of human dogma was slavery and death, essentially. And Satan, in, Ma- in Milton's Paradise Lost, Satan decides that he can do without the transcendent, he can do without God, and that's why he foments rebellion. It's something like that. And the consequence of that, the immediate consequence from Milton's perspective was that as soon as Satan decided that what he knew was sufficient and that he could do without the transcendent, which you might think about as the domain outside of what you know, something like that, immediately he was in hell. And when I read Paradise Lost, I was studying totalitarianism.